Hello, welcome to our video lecture for Chapter 2, Overview of Transaction Processing and ERP Systems, Enterprise Resource Planning Systems. The transaction storage is all about data processing, right? You have an input, possibly a source document or a, a, a transaction such as paying an invoice. Then you have to process that information that you got your input. Then you have to store it and create a um, information output, which is usually financial statements or supporting evidence for the journal entry. Input is pretty much you capture the transaction that basically triggered the business event. So you're either capturing the sale of property, plan, and equipment or the acquisition. You, you what might be copy, um, you might be capturing the uh, purchase of inventory, etc. Once you get the data, you obviously have to ensure that it's accurate and complete. One of our auditing standards is completeness, and that it's built into your data input. Then, more importantly, you want to make sure that the company's policies are followed, for and that's your internal controls. So you want to make sure those are in place and that they're actually being followed and performed. You capture the data. And it's basically some activity of interest, a sale, a purchase of um, inventory or other payables. Then you want to make sure what's affected. It could be cash, it could be inventory, it could be accounts receivable. Then who initiated that activity? Was it a customer calling to uh, purchase items? Was it you as the entity calling a vendor to get replenishment of stock or your employee when it comes to payroll and, and HR? All the information that you are capturing comes from source documents. And third-party documents are the most reliable. So if I receive a bank statement, that is far more reliable than a report I created myself, such as a PO. Source documents is data when the actual transaction takes place. So similar to revenue recognition, once the transaction takes place, you're allowed to record it when it's earned. And documents can come in several formats, paper, turnaround, uh, maybe you're getting, you're getting these documents from a cash register, a point of sale, a scanner that will, like in Walmart, that tells you, yes, we've sold this. Storage is basically how everything is organized, and that's key. You have a chart of accounts, which lists all the account numbers and the description of the account, and that is what gives you the capability of recording a transaction to one of those accounts. That, but the key to establishing a chart of account is, is make sure it works with you and builds with you in your organization. So you might have a just a simple account number for the first segment of that general ledger account, then you may have another segment which includes possibly the regional area or the division. And then the final segment might be for the department. The data storage can also take place in the format of transaction journals. Every time you have a sale, obviously that's a transaction. Or for cash receipts, every time there's a payment on account receivables, you would have a accounts receivable journal. Then you would also have the, I'm sorry, the cash disbursements journal. You would also have subsidiary ledgers, such as accounts receivable, or accounts payable, or inventory, or fixed assets. And those transactions, once you've looked at the chart of accounts, you've analyzed the transaction, posted it to the proper sub-ledger, it should be posted to the sub-ledger and the general ledger at the same time. That way, there's no discrepancies between the, the two. The purpose of data storage is to give us an audit trail, right? It gives us evidential matter supporting the transactions that we're conducting in the AIS system. So this just goes through the audit trail for a particular invoice, and you will see here is the invoice in our sales journal, then the full amount of that sales journal is in your general ledger for accounts receivable. You will also have a general ledger for credit sales as part of um, that piece. So then that would be your actual recording of the sale. Uh, then you would have the subsidiary ledger and you got practice in chapter one on what that would look like. 
data can, is stored in master files or transaction files. So you would have different attributes. So here's your customer number, the name, address, credit limit, and balance. And basically the master file for the customer might have this information and including their address. Now the credit limit and balance could be different. The credit limit could also be part of the screen where you're entering the customer for the first time. And then your balance is obviously the outstanding balance. So those and that balance will give you further details in the to the transaction that comprise that balance. There are four types of processing or CRUD for short. Acronyms are always your friend. So the data processing, you have to create a record. So similar to what a row is in Excel, you want to add that customer or add a vendor in that module. Then you would like, you read the data in that module. You update any previous record or data that needs to be possibly showing a cash receipts towards the customer's account. And then you delete data. We don't really delete too much. We, we purge if possible because we're always so afraid. But deleting data could mean that you're just reversing an entry. You can have batch processing when you do data, which is you do everything at one particular point in time. So that batch of activity for that day, such as sales shipped, would be processed in a batch to the sales journal or real time, which is basically when it occurs. So obviously, if every time you scan something at Walmart, it automatically generates the journal entry to record the revenue, that would be real time. Output is basically database files online or soft copy and printed out hard copy with um, everything being automated and then the efficiency of going paperless obviously um, online seems a bit more plausible when you do you might have to just print things out such as an invoice to the customer you might have to print a report for your monthly sales in order to calculate salesperson's commission or you can actually do a query, which is where you're retrieving information from several pieces of data, such as tables for customer with the address, and then um, tables for sales and cash receipts to that customer to get your accounts receivable balance. ERP systems, enterprise resource planning, basically gives all the activities for an organization, puts them all together. So in production, that will say what we're going to produce. Payroll will probably tell us all of our employees and what they make and their current pay. Sales gives us the activities that we're actually selling a product, purchasing. We might be replenishing our inventory and financial reporting. Most of these areas could also be a module in your AIS system. Advantages of ERP, it's a better flow of the information. So it's a central uh, database or a data warehouse and it can have several access points. Once the data is captured, uh, then it, you, know, you no longer need the sale to enter data about a customer, then accounting has that same data for invoicing. You can, uh, you can go to that table and that record of that customer and use the same information so there's no duplication. And also controls of the data, where you can enhance security controls, giving people access to the system for only those portions that they need. So if you're processing cash receipts in AR, you would just have access possibly to the uh, AR module. And it gives you a good standardization or a better workflow, and that helps you get those standardizations so the procedures are second nature, the internal controls are followed, the reports are generated. Now, the bad side of ERP could be costly, way long to implement. It's, it's complex and there's obviously with anything employees or people, they're just not susceptible to change. But the cost and the complexity probably make it the, those are probably the biggest disadvantages why several companies do not integrate an ERP system. So these are all the terms that you've learned in this chapter. Hopefully this helps you get a better understanding of AIS and transaction processing and data storage. Thank mm -hmm. you.